we're looking at zeros of a polynomial function. So in this 3.1.23, we are given a graph and we want to write down the zeros and the multiplicity. So let's go ahead and not use the black marker because that looks just like everything on the graph. So we'll just go ahead, fill these in. Um, now, this is both an x and a y intercept. Zeros are x intercepts, so make sure that you're looking for x intercepts. So zeros are x intercepts, not y intercepts. This happens to be a y-intercept also, and that's okay, but if your y-intercept was up here, it would not also be an x-intercept. So we have three x-intercepts. Whenever you have a bounce, which is happening right here when x is zero. So I'll list them over here. x equals zero, bounce. So generally, this is going to be multiplicity two. The even multiplicities uh, bounce either looking like that or like that. So that will be a multiplicity two, sometimes four, but really you're only going to see multiplicity two. Uh, and actually, let me leave those out there. Okay, so we have x equals negative four, negative four. Uh, write that down. Now this one clearly crosses, it goes from the top to the bottom. Now this one cuts through really sharply, uh, and this is cross, and this is going to have multiplicity 1. Every cross is going to have multiplicity, an odd multiplicity. Uh, but this one's going to just cut through sharply, and so it has multiplicity 1. Now we're going to look at the last x equals 5 here, positive 5. All right, what's happening over here? Let's zoom in a little bit. It is crossing, it might be tricky to see, but it goes from below, comes out above, so it's crossing, but it's flat right there. So if you zoom in really far, you'll see it's basically flat. It's only actually flat right at the point. It's almost flat around it, but not quite. All right, so we'll write that down. Well, I should write, draw a little picture for our cross multiplicity. It's either gonna look like that, or look like that. So here are x equals five. It's a cross, which always means odd, but this one has a multiplicity of three because it goes up, flattens out, and then comes back up. It can also happen the other way where it goes down, flattens out, and goes back down. So that's how the cross multiplicities look. Uh, Later, we're going to need to turn these into factors. This question doesn't say anything about factors. So if you do need to write it as a factor, so zeros would be x equals a. Factor looks like x minus a in parentheses. So on our first one, we got x equals 0. So it looks like x minus 0. And multiplicity 2 means it's multiplied by itself twice or to the power of 2. And of course you can just write that one as x squared. Uh, next up, our multiplicity 1. So our 0 looks like x equals 1. As a factor, it's x minus 1. This has multiplicity 1. You could write a little 1 up there, but it's not necessary. Um, and there's this correspondence that will come into play very soon. Alright, last up. x equals 5. And that corresponds to x minus 5. And this one is raised to the third power. All right, there's only three x-intercepts, or three zeros. And they also tell us the largest possible multiplicity is three right here. So that's a big hint that we don't have any multiplicity four, five, or six, or more. And then you're only going to write down the first three zeros. And it may say them in order. All right, it doesn't say about the order, so when in doubt, go smallest to largest, which, uh-oh, oh no. Negative four, and x minus negative four is x plus four. All right, so make sure they're asking about the zeros, so you're gonna use these right here, those values, those are the zeros.